Okay, welcome to the advanced light source. It's an electron synchrotron. This diagram helps us understand what we're talking about. The yellow 12 straight sections, 12 bends, is the synchrotron that carries electrons around, traveling around at the speed of light. And when those electrons um, are bent, and accelerated because bending is a form of acceleration. They emit light, very bright sources of light that go down tubes right here. And experiments then are carried out at the end of these beam lines. And all of these experiments can be going on simultaneously. And you can see a list of the kinds of experiments that we uh, have going on at the light source. So Ernest Lawrence, was the founder of the laboratory, won the Nobel Prize because he invented the cyclotron, which made it possible for the nuclei of atoms to come close enough together, overcome coulombic repulsion, and uh, undergo um, nuclear reactions, and we began to understand and probe the nuclear properties and nuclear forces. This uh, it was the 184 inch cyclotron. It was the reason for coming up and building a laboratory up here because we're. Um, this is such a large cyclotron, there was no place for it on campus. So this is one of the uh, user end, end stations where the experiments are done. Now the first thing you notice as we walk here is that all of these end stations or user stations where the experiments are done all come out diagonally uh, out, of the, out of the walls back here. These, this is the shielding and behind that is the uh, synchrotron storage ring and what's happening is that this line that carries the light goes back to a tangent on the ring so the electrons are going around this ring and, the, and as they come forward they shoot light out and we put a little hole in the, uh, in the storage ring and the light comes shooting out and, and down these, these pipes the energy of the light is x-rays and ultraviolet light it's about anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times shorter wavelength than visible light. And in the uh, video, you saw that you can't see things smaller than the wavelength of the light that's irradiating them. So we can see things rather than a 500 nanometers, which is the wavelength of visible light, we can see things all the way down to under a nanometer in size. It also is true that x-rays and ultraviolet light are strongly absorbed by the electrons in the atoms. And so you have to evacuate these lines and get all the air out or the light would be, um, would be absorbed as it came along. It's also true that the light comes out as a really small pencil beam. So it's a very bright source of light. And you also heard that this, the, source of, the light itself can be a billion times brighter than the surface of the sun. What that means is on a per stair radian basis, if you would go back to the sun and take a tiny little dot, that would be the size of the beam of light coming out here. This light would be, have a billion times more photons than the, the light in the sun. One of the ways that we uh, use this uh, light is to actually do uh, microscopy. The same way that we would do microscopy with visible light. In this particular case, we're able to um, look at a, uh, in this case, an actual intact single cell and do an x-ray analysis of the cell. So we actually get an x-ray tomographic image um, that we can turn into a three-dimensional di three rendering of a cell intact down to the nanoscale level. So we can begin to see things inside of the cell that we've never seen before. Here's a really cool experiment that we did. We sent a satellite to the tail of a comet and when we got there, we opened the door of the satellite and we exposed, as it was flying through the tail, we exposed this material called aerogel. This is a very porous, silicon, very light material, tremendous insulating capabilities. If you were to hold it in your hand, you might have a block about this big. You could barely feel the weight. And it, it's almost like holding a cloud. The particles stuck in this thing, we brought them back here and we were able then to analyze one particle at a time by shining the light on it using this Stixum and analyze what's in the tail of Halley's Comet. So that was a uh, pretty cool experiment and this again is another way of using the light 
Uh, this is absorption spectroscopy uh, of x-rays.